Morning. Morning, you all right? How's Donna? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? I'm good. How old are you? Me? Yeah. I'm 59 in February. So don't you think I'm quite outgoing for my age? Yeah, you, you're mature, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, when I'm your age, I want to be like you. Oh, that's a compliment, isn't it? Go on, then. Why do you want to be like Joe? Because she's got a sex life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless. Yeah, but that's, I think that's important. I think it's, it's, it's good. And to be in love. And to be in love, yes. Mm, that's nice, <laughs> thank you. It's like loose women, this, isn't it? Like <laughs> loose detention <laughs> officers. <laughs> Oh, here we go. For those arrested and placed under lock and key. Are they off to the face? Yeah. No. Birchin Way custody facility in Grimsby is like no other. We've moved along with the times, you know, we've left the old dungeons behind. This state-of-the-art, £14 million facility is the first of its kind. So I am authorising your detention here, as uncomfortable as it might be, because it's obviously not the Hilton. It's situated in one of the most deprived areas in the country. Get the oh, my gosh. Get me some earplugs, will you? <laughs> Over 6,000 detainees come through the doors every year. A couple of hours and there'll be somebody else in this room. It's a bit like one of your busiest hotels, really. They've interrupted so beautifully. <laughs> It may be a challenge. I can't hear you because you put poo in the intercom. But these unsung heroes... Smells a bit fresh. ..have a groundbreaking approach to deal with new detainees. Heroin and crack at 80 quid a day. Do you want any help with that? Not to pay for it. No, not to pay for it, no. Just because they've been arrested doesn't mean to say that they've committed an offence. So we're going to treat them as customers rather than as criminals. Got lobster thermidor, filet mignon in a sauce bernaise. Newspapers. And if successful, it will be rolled out across the UK. What would you rate us on TripAdvisor? Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten, that'll do for me. What be moment? <laughs> This is the most important job in the custody suite, making the drinks. You all right? You OK? Hello, um, Everybody has their own cup. Donna's has obviously got an initial on. Malcolm. Malcolm, he uh, breeds budgies. And Lulu, she's got pictures of her and her friends dressed as nuns on uh, a hen night. A sergeant, he just has any cup. <laughs> Just keep us going. Custody team two has just started their night shift. Are we good to go? Eyes down. Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> the first ball out is number one. It's the start of shift briefing. A rundown by the sergeant for the six civilian detention officers detailing who's currently locked up. So on my side, I've got number two. He's in for a domestic-related common assault. He's got minor injuries to his face. I'm not sure whether that's part of the incident or apparently he's got a fierce cat. Detainees. <laughs> they, I suppose they are guests to a certain degree. We are essentially looking after detainees until they're ready to be moved on. For somebody that's sat in there, time goes very slow. They're locked away in a cell, they can't see out, they've got four walls, if they want feeding, they want drinks, and they want regular updates as to what's going on. And last but not least, he claims to have trauma. When asked what your trauma is, he said that's from living in Grimsby. <laughs> no comment. That completes my side. For the reluctant detainees, the custody suite's 36 cells offer some of the most modern facilities in the country. It's a multi-million pound complex. All mod comms, CCTV in every cell, you know, toilets, wash basins, everything that they need. They've even got pillars now, so it is luxury. I say to them, don't treat it as a hotel, because it's not. It's got quite busy now. So we've got two actually waiting to be booked in. 
People don't want to book into this hotel, let's face it. It's not a place where anybody particularly wants to come to, and it's not a place where you generally want to come back to. I'll come to see if you want anything to eat or drink before you go to court. We're like a sausage machine. Just welcoming people one way and going out the other way. It's just after midnight and a couple are on their way into custody. Having been arrested following a disturbance at a caravan site in Cleethorpes. Are you going to behave, yeah? I think there's been some sort of disturbance between the two police who turned up by the sounds of it. I don't know if that's blood around her face or makeup. The lady that we got in custody, uh, is dressed as Harley Quinn by the looks of it. I presume a boyfriend is the Joker. You <laughs> sound like the Joker as well. I've seen the Incredible Hulk before. He came in all green with his shirt ripped. Did he have muscles? I wouldn't say so. <laughs> have you been in touch with him before? Not here, like no, I'm nowhere near home. Well, I'm from Essex. Right. We come from the caravan. Oh, uh, right. The caravan had a fancy dress for him. I mean, who in their right mind would drive all the way from Essex... Really? ..to here to for a holiday? Why well, would you come all the way from Essex? There's plenty of places between Essex and here that are much, much nicer. Why would you want to come here? I'll tell you why. Because as you come into Grimsby, the sign says, Great Grimsby. And they must have thought, Oh, it's great there. <laughs> but how long am I going to be here? Well, we need to sober you up first. Some drunks are fabulous. They're like a good laugh, they're like a good joke, you know, they're entertaining. Oh, cos I'm going to look like silly. Why do you look silly? I don't know, but, uh, Have you got a mirror? I haven't, no. Right, how much alcohol have you had? You've got some ones that are sad, um, depressed. You all right? Mate, you're all right, pal. Honestly. Oh, I was, uh, not at all. No. No, honestly, mate. No. OK, OK. Way, way too much alcohol, I think. The custody staff are not involved in the police investigation. So I need to get some details from the officers to why you're here, and then we'll go from there. But they need details of the arrest to ensure the detainee's detention is lawful. Identified by security staff as being heavily intoxicated, he has grabbed a security staff member and dragged him through a doorway. The suspect has become irate, flashed out and hit. Did I hit you? You did. Where? In the face. The same. In the opposite face? Yeah. No. I'm not no liar. You can ask him. I've been with him 15 years. I don't lie. It's a hand on my heart. Honestly, I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, that's the fine. The officers do yeah. wear body-worn video. Okay. Yeah, and, and I really do want them to check him. Yeah, yeah, fine. Get out of my face. 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 Get out of my face! I'm happy with that. I'll just give Martina a call. Well, come on. No, not while you've been like that, I'm not. It's a busy weekend night shift in Birchin Way custody suite. I've just checked. Apparently, we're still waiting on your medication. Thank you. Anyone arrested can be held in one of the 36 cells. There you go for up to 24 oh, hours. Right, well, I've already explained to you, why I? When the officer comes up to bail, yeah? You need to explain to us. I always say to them, banging and kicking ain't gonna get you out of here any quicker. This is how it is. I'm not gonna bullshit you. This is how it is. I don't get involved in the investigation. I'm here solely to look after your welfare. To give you something to eat, something to drink, something to read if you want it. That is it. I'll do whatever I can for you, other than give you the keys to go. I will. You're welcome. <laughs> It's one o'clock now, 1 a.m. Well, how long have we been here? Uh, probably about an hour. Still being booked in are a holidaying couple from Essex in fancy dress. The Joker, very emotional, too much drink. Um, he uh, didn't want to engage, he didn't want to provide his address, so I said, well, if you don't provide your address, you don't get bail, it's as simple as that, and very quickly the address came running out of his mouth. Don't know. What's female dress stars? Ali Quinn. Ali Quinn. There you go. I don't actually know why the police got called on us. Okay. And that's the God's honest truth, hand on my heart. The allegation is that 
he struck out and unfortunately hit a police officer. That's the reason why he'd been but arrested I actually tonight. didn't. She's denied assaulting a police officer, but apparently it's all on body, uh, cam. body cam. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see what happens. You've caused issues all night. We've got complaints coming in left, right, and centre. They can't touch me. No one's going to touch me. You've got to bring a fucking army, mate. Hey, the fuck Why are you causing me? an issue Get when the we fuck want to do is speak? Often detainees, when they're brought into custody, they'll be protesting their innocence, shouting and bawling at us, telling us where we need to go to find the evidence, basically, to, to prove their innocence. My hand on my heart. Honestly, I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Yeah, the officers do wear body one video. Okay. Yeah, and, and um, I really do want them to check it. Yeah. You're not moving from no. the camera, no. why? Because no. I'm not. Get out my face. No, I'll get, get out my face. face. Get out my face. Get out of 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 my face. When we investigate, um, we find that people have lied to us. You've hit me in the face. No, I did direct to assault police. Do you not have to say anything? They hand me the phone. But they lie to us all the time. You just hit me in the face. No, I didn't. I didn't touch you. He'd obviously been arrested for assault on the security guard and then she'd obviously stepped in because she didn't want him locking up and then she assaulted police and she came in. But yeah, sleep off the alcohol and uh, I'll get interviewed in the morning. Certainly, I'll be down now. A detainee in cell number nine is making use of one of the facilities that's less popular with the staff. The intercom. Yes. I need to see, you know, that person who was in charge of my case. We have a, a buzzer system that Humberside Police have, have put into the cells um, and for our needy individuals. Some detainees, they get very buzzer happy. So it's buzz, what time is it? Buzz, can I have some food? Buzz, what time is it? Buzz, can I have some food? <laughs> you know my ex partner? Yeah, carry on. I've had a pound for every time somebody pressed that buzzer. I'd be a millionaire. Some people say, you know, it's a bit like in a hotel. It's like room service. Miss? Yeah. Can you get a bus from Maldives? I haven't got a clue. I don't live in Grimsby. Anything else? No, that's it, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Can you get a bus? Got one on route now. Police, what's your emergency? There's been a, an accident, there's a vehicle on its roof. Possibly the driver could be, it could be in drink. Just passing this as an emergency, OK. Next into custody is a man arrested for drink driving. Hello. Officer attended, and this chap who stood by the vehicle and has told officers he was the driver of the vehicle. What nationality are you? Romanian. Romanian? So oh, dear. So Say again? So so. You're the driver of this vehicle? Yeah. Do you, can you understand me enough? You're going to get breathalyzed, OK? So, blow in. Keep blowing so you hear click. Keep going. Thank you. Is there something wrong? You've blown about four times over the limit, and you'll be coming with us, OK? So, yeah, he's a foreign male. Yeah. When you're booking somebody in, I mean, we could be dealing with somebody who's in for murder. You could be dealing with somebody who's in for sexual offences. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's my job. I'm not here to judge. That's what a judge does at the courts. I'm not here to judge. So I treat everybody the same. What I need him to do now is to take a big, deep breath and continue to blow until I tell him to stop. When you're ready, blow into the tube. Blow. Jill needs a telephone interpreter to make the Romanian man understand that he needs to give Blow. two samples of breath and the lowest will be given in evidence. Right, listen, you need to keep going and, until I say stop, not when you stop, OK? I'm hard. I don't mean hard as in, as an, an, you know, I'll take on the world. I'm hard in that. I don't suffer fools. Because I want to give him one more chance. Blow. When I need to be tough, I am tough. Piss me off and you'll get now. Simple as. Tell him that he will be charged with failing to provide. The legal limit for driving is under 35. The first specimen that he blew was 137. He will be charged with failing to provide two specimens of breath for analysis uh, and he will be charged with drink driving. 
Blue. What? Blue. You've got to blue. What else do blue. you want? Blow. Well, can you imagine me being in there going, blow, <laughs> blow, blow? I think I was having an orgasm or something, wasn't I? For God's sake. I'm not from Grimsby. I'm from Hull. Uh, they all say I've got a bit of a twang. I think every day they're taking the mic. <laughs> Eee, bagum. It's going down well, a bit of sugar. We are a bit of a snacking uh, team. We tend to snack more at night. You've got a lot more interviews going on during the day, so we don't actually get time to like dip into the chocolate biscuits as much as we'd like to. Are we doing orders? Yeah. And dirty refs on the last night shift. <laughs> Weekend dirty refs. Uh, refreshments. It's a police term. Dirty refs are pizzas, kebabs, all those kind of unhealthy food. What are you having? I'm having a southern fried chicken wrap. I think I'm out of a pizza. Do you really like tapas and that? I love tapas. And if you were single and free, I'd take you. You'd wine and dine me? I'd wine and dine you. It would gel really, really well. Uh, we do have a laugh. And Lou's taken, and Don is taken. I know. We, we don't do detainees, do we? <laughs> no. That's, that's, a, that's no. a big no-no. No, no. no. We've organised, we're all going out, and it's uh, Tom Jones Tribune. <laughs> Maybe take a pair of knickers to chuck at him while he's there. Wow, look at that. A burger and a pizza. Jill, you need to try this pizza burger. Look at that. No, no, honestly, no. Are you sure? I'm very sure. I can see your mouth watering. It's thinking not that watering. Looks like really it's nice. not. It's a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> you go down your neck while you're doing mm. it. A whole night spent alone in a cell allows for sobering up and reflection. Especially for one detainee. It feels like I've literally been in there for like forever. It's just like something like this would never happen. And I, like, because I don't know, like, obviously the, what happened, and I, I just see red, and then, but yeah, it's just not going to happen again, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not very nice, but I've ruined it, so I just can't wait to see my girls. That is literally it. <laughs> my children, and that's it, yeah. Stood down means we can go home. There we go, look. There's no worse than going home with a set of cell keys in your pocket and having to come all the way back again. <laughs> A new day brings new custody staff. Morning, you all right? We just make sure all the cells in that all are tidy out and clean. Can you tell them again the other night? Cogs? Yeah, one nil. Champions League next year. <laughs> Today, it's team three. OK, morning, everyone. Raring to go. I'll just apologise in advance. Mrs cooked a really nice carbonara and it was full of garlic last night, so if I smell, that's the reason. <laughs> OK, so in one, he's in for failing a roadside drug swipe and possession with intent to supply. Uh, he had a nosebleed when he was brought in and he threw coffee at the custody sergeant. So you all know what he's like. Number three is in for Section 20 GBH. The only thing he's really concerned about is, uh, is he going to get his trainers back after they've been seized? I'm sure that'd be top of my mind as well. Uh, and uh, number nine, he was absolutely off his face when he was brought in on drugs. Anyway, he's only just been deemed fit at 6 o'clock this morning after being arrested yesterday uh, afternoon. Due to budget cuts, we're putting them all in one cell. Hey. <laughs> Cheers, guys. The traditional view of a custody sergeant is a grumpy old uh, last few years of service left <laughs> sergeant. I'm definitely not grumpy, no. You, that's one thing I don't do. <laughs> it's the clay hands down winner. I'm the grumpy one, and Jay is the joker. You're not grumpy. In the mornings, you're not great. Sorry, grizzled, was it? Grizzled. grizzled. She's, she's a grizzled, grizzled. veteran. <laughs> Urr, I know what I'm doing. Urr. <laughs> The longer I've been in custody, the grumpier I get. <laughs> and I've got a bit of a resting grumpy face. <laughs> An early morning arrival into the custody suite is 61-year-old Leslie, who's been arrested for theft. If you've ever seen the film Forrest Gump, uh, the bit where he says that life is like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. Well, that's typical of custody. So you never know what you're going to get coming through the door. Hi. 
They've interrupted my beauty months. sleep. <laughs> no, you don't need it. You'd be right. You've been here before. I hope so. You are. You hope you've been here before. I have been here before. Yeah. Right, okay. And circumstances, please. Uh, it's female has been identified uh, to enter the Grimsby Garden Centre and steal a fountain pump. I ain't even got a garden. <laughs> now are you feeling at the minute? I feel all right, actually. Usually when you arrest me, it's about nine o'clock. I'm a bit upset now at this oh, time. My beauty yeah, sleep. <laughs> Leslie is no stranger to the custody suite. Leslie, is there any possibility that you could be pregnant? I'm 61. Now. <laughs> she was previously jailed for two and a half years in a case that made national headlines. I was on Look North about four years ago. A woman from Cleethorpes has been jailed after admitting to possession of Class A drugs and handling stolen goods. Homicide police found more than 2,000 individual items when they searched Leslie's home. Among the property discovered were dozens of box watches, makeup, clothes, and toys. The 55 year old was jailed for two and a half years. Oh, do you know what? That's nice. For someone that's got a, a, a relatively decent, if that's the right way of putting it, criminal record. Uh, no, it's not what I was expecting at all. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that. The jury's going to have to come off, Leslie, I'm afraid. Leslie will remain in custody while investigations continue. I had my pyjamas on, I thought, but... Did you? Know. <laughs> At this time of the morning, we're quite tired and grumpy, so it's nice to actually get someone coming in as a customer that's quite jovial. Don't want to touch him myself. I don't blame you. <laughs> It's rare, rare occasion. Not being abused, shouted at. Yeah, the ones that, that actually recognise that we're not just a uniform and that we're actually people in these uniforms. So yeah, I like, I like those people. So now carry your book, you've got your cup of tea. Where are we going, Sarge? Uh, 28. 28. 28. Yeah. Hey. My birthday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to get back to it beautifully. <laughs> Have you not been offered any meal uh, at meal time? For detainees in custody, it's a waiting game to be interviewed, go to court, be bailed or released. I think you were using an interview, wasn't you? You're just a big lad and you need fattening up. Yeah, we'll sort you out. The detention officers, who are civilians and not police, look after them around the clock. They always want feeding. Feed the bellies, keeps them happy, makes our job a lot easier. I've had a very interesting life, yep. Yeah, done a lot of things with my life. Um, if it was end tomorrow, I'd actually think, yeah, well, I've had a good, good spin at it. What attracted me to working in custody, I would probably say was... Um, um, do I stop? Because I do know this one. It's just... It's just an organised mess. How many have you got for court? Seven. Keeps you well on your toes. Charge room. Sue has just received notice that a known violent offender is on his way into custody. Oh, right, is he playing, is he kicking off? He's really not happy, oh gosh. Can we have a welcoming party, please, for this dry cell chappy? He's kicking off massively in the van. All of a sudden, the phone will ring, and you've got one en route, and it's a real serious offence. The mood completely changes. We all batten down. We all know what we need to do. Right, so he's here. Good God, is that him screaming out there? Oh, my God. been brought into custody, having been arrested for actual bodily harm. Put him straight to cell five if we need to. He's suspected of being under the influence of drugs or alcohol, so he's taken straight to a cell. We've got somebody at the moment that's been brought in. We, we know him. 
he can be slightly unpredictable. Sergeant Jason will need to assess him. All right, I'm, I'm authorising your detention to secure and preserve evidence. It's quite a serious offence that he's here for. He's stuck a pair of scissors in his friend's mouth, he's punched her in the nose, possibly breaking her nose. It's so obviously serious offences. After 10 years of working in custody, you think, oh, I've seen it all. No. <laughs> then something else will present itself, and you think, OK, what is your name? <laughs> OK, you know what we're doing? During the incident, the arrested man has sustained a serious injury to his hand. Do you want to look at his thumb? Let's have a look. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> right, the medic... <laughs> All right, you need to... <laughs> Just let the medic treat you with your thumb, because it looks quite painful. We have a healthcare professional permanently based in the custody suite. We'd, we'd get them booked in and say that he's got the hospital, because it's not appropriate for them to be here. Absolutely, definitely need to close it. Right. Death He's got a bad cut on his hand, really deep cut. We have to go to A and E, but we can't take him to A and E like that. That'd be the best outcome for everyone, wouldn't it? From what we know, the guy is normally drug induced. Although he is angry, aggressive, and he's, he's suspected of committing a serious offence, he is also uh, very vulnerable. Up against the wall. The detainee will be kept in custody whilst the effects of any drugs he's thought to have taken wear off. Sarah, bearing in mind my wife could see it. No, thank you. I'll have um, celery and rivetas. <laughs> I get 20 sins a day and a bacon butt would be about 24. So I'm uh, really chirpy. I'm a bit like Tigger in the mornings. Maybe we should start using the old custody breakfasts. You go first and let me know how you get on. <laughs> mm, what shall I have today, brown, beige or grey? Mm. My wife, she's not a morning person. And uh, we'd never lived together before getting married. And uh, after a week, she phoned up her mum. I won't shut up. Oh, I want to come home. Thank you. You're always so helpful, my little ray of sunshine. No, no, I think it's just 13 years in the military. Of, I'm full of beans in the morning. When's your next holiday, Gaz? Uh, January. And where are you going? Let's have a guess. Lanzarote. Is that where you go every time? Is that where you go every time, Gaz? Is that your well, favourite? That's, that's where the sun is at this time, isn't it? We're booking a cruise. You've been on a cruise? You've been on Alfred Ross, does that count? <laughs> 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 and Cogs cruising round laybys doesn't count either, mate. All right. I've what? done the cruise round the Emirates, Dubai. A lot of sand. Man. A lot of docks, grotty docks. Uh, all you've got to do is drive. Five minutes out of here and you can go to an even grottier docks. <laughs> Grimsby docks. Grimsby, for me, uh, I thought was a wonderful place to be. I've watched it deteriorate. The big retail shops pulled out and then the docks closed. Grimsby was one of the biggest fishing ports in the United Kingdom. Quite an um, economically wealthy place to live but not so much anymore. I've not grown up locally, but I've been in Grimsby a few years now. Grimsby is quite unique. It has its plus points. There is quite a sense of uh, community spirit, and this is where I'll be staying, hopefully. Vicky is one of the two sergeants in charge. Won't make a very good shelf stacker at Tesco. But hierarchy doesn't stop her from getting stuck into the more mundane tasks. Handcuff keys have more than one use as well. Detainees need more than just food and drink, especially if their clothes have been taken for evidence. Well, we stock everything in here, from beautiful, finest footwear, like the old school pencils that you'd have worn at primary school, and the exceptionally fashionable, non-branded grey uniform. In a busy week, we can get through boxes and boxes. Quite like doing stocking up. Quite therapeutic. As a child, I never knew what I wanted to do with my life as a grown-up, but I wanted to do something with my life that I could help other people, something that 
wasn't just sort of working in an office nine to five. I don't like doing the same thing day in, day out. And whilst people might think custody is that, it's not. Vicky's next job is not one for the squeamish. So the occupant of cell number three currently is residing in his own faeces. Uh, <laughs> what do you say to that? Um, <laughs> it's a relatively regular thing, I suppose, in here. We sort of kind of get used to it. You'd be surprised about what people do in custody. The detainee in cell three was arrested for theft of a motor vehicle. His so-called dirty protest is a common occurrence in custody. He's rubbed it all over his intercom. Nice. Right, let's go and have a word with him, see what he's trying to achieve. Step back from the door. What are you doing all that for? OK, you're suspected of criminal offences. You know the score, you've been here plenty of times. It's not a hotel, mate. You, this is, you're going to get charged with a criminal offence for this. For everything you do, there's a consequence, mate. You can't expect us to come running in at your beck and call. Show as you can be here for half an hour and I will move you. Well, OK, you, you can stay here all night, then. All right. I've got to work here. I don't want to walk up and down the corridor when it stinks. There's other detainees here we've got to think about. I've got to think about my staff. I would imagine that he'll realise that he's not going to get anywhere and then he'll calm down and then we can move him. You'll get detainees here in custody and, and they'll make demands uh, and that's their way of sort of trying to wrestle a little bit of control back off you. And, and I always try and emphasise to the uh, detainees, you're not in control. This is our, uh, our environment, we're in charge, uh, and you know, you'll comply and you'll do what we need you to do. So, what are you done with the shoes? Yeah. I've just put a jumper in here, that's all. A less challenging detainee is 61-year-old Leslie, who's admitted to the theft of a garden water pump. I don't bother me being in here. It's like a holiday to me. I've been in here loads of times in the police station. And jail. When I went to jail before, I was in the Sun newspaper, Gangster Granny of Grimsby. <laughs> it was good to in jail, you know what I mean? I got a bit of, you know. But I don't want to be proud of. This is why I'm trying to be good. I am trying to be good. Change my life round. I'm getting too old. Leslie, all right? You take care. <laughs> yeah, she's lived life to the full, that lady. Absolutely. She knows how it runs. Like, uh, yeah. She wrote the book, I think. <laughs> For me, the best thing about working in custody is meeting all the different types of personalities. I love it. It's just interesting talking to people and the little quirks and the things that they say to you sometimes, it's really funny. You just have to be light-hearted with it all. You just do, that's just how it is. Hello? I can't hear you because you put poo in the intercom. No, you can't have a drink. Because I'm not dropping the hatch. You've got shit all over it. Listen, I said to you, I need to look after you, I'll look after you but you've covered yourself in shit and all over the door, so I ain't dropping the hatch. They get their hands like that, and they rub it all in the intercom like that. Then they put it all over the windows, all on the mattress, and they do all this over the face. And then they stand there, they buzz the buzzer, and they say, will you come and talk to me, miss? I can't talk to you like that, mate, not while, you look, well, not while you're covered in poo. You stink. If you guys haven't volunteered. I'm not clearing it up now. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm just going to clean it off his camera, though. I ain't my hero is going to go and clean it. I'll just get stripped down to my thong and then just put oh, a paper yes. suit on. <laughs> I hope it's leopard print. I don't think he's going to do anything to us, but famous last words. He said to me, the first person that opens this door, they're going to get the shit straight in the face. If this goes wrong, I won't be happy. <laughs> <laughs> So when you first join the police, you think you're going to change the world, but uh, I didn't expect to be cleaning someone's poo off a wall. 
Is there any need for any of this? We're only here to look after you. Yeah, that's because you weren't cooperating. If you show us you can behave a bit, we'll get you moved. But as it stands, you're going to have to stay here. It smells a bit fresh. <laughs> After 30 minutes of good behaviour, the dirty protester can be moved to a clean cell. Number four, three. That's shattered glass, isn't it? Number two's dirty, isn't it? I don't know what happened to number two. Number three's full of number two. <laughs> that was good, that, wasn't it? That was really quick, that Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> After a sleep in his cell, the man accused of a violent assault has finally calmed down. Can I come and have a quick chat with you? You know me. It's now safe to book him in and for Sue to take his photographs and prints. This way. If you show empathy and you actually are listening to them, that they're being heard, and then you settle them down. You look into that camera for me. Keep still. The skills that you build up over many, many years allows you to look at the bigger picture of everybody, because they've always got their story. There you go, good lad. You all right? Yeah? Thank you. His bubble and what that encompasses is quite a sad situation. Where he is in life now is not where he obviously wants to be. Where are you eating at the minute then? Where are you getting your food from? Neighbours. They're looking after you, are they? Yeah. All right, lad. Good. You know, you do care. I won't be human if I didn't. Come on then, we're done. The detainee will now go to hospital for treatment to his hand. You all right? Yeah, boy. When he returns, he'll be charged with the assault on his friend. How they're living their lives, they think that's normal. But what is normal nowadays? Sometimes I actually don't know anymore. Can I help you? Today, Team Two are back on for another shift. Oh, dear. Cleaning the cell out is this guy's an interview, we haven't even left yet. But his cell's an absolute mess. I've been in custody for 16 years. The custody suite then had about 25 cells in it. But them 25 cells, only two of them um, had CCTV in them, and only two of them had toilets in them. As well, we was actually booking in and charging and bailing, but now the sergeants do solely the booking in, and we just concentrate on welfare of the detainees. Many of those arriving daily are regular visitors to custody. The next at the booking in desk... Number two, please. ..is one of them. A, another who's just arrived, who is known to us, um, who usually does kick off. So we'll do our best and see how we go on. A woman has been arrested for GBH. Good afternoon. Well, I need an ambulance. Just you need an ambulance. A wee? So we need to get you searched first. No, no, right. I have to be self there. Right, OK. She's got three goblins in a bra and she's been placing her hands down the front of the trousers. Right, right, OK. Right. Just keep your hands where we can see them then. This young lady that is booking in, uh, she's got warnings for secreting hiding drugs, um, so he's authorised a strip search on her. Number one. That's You are detained, you're in custody. Based on what the officer said, I'm going to authorise this strip search. A woman has been arrested and brought into custody for grievous bodily harm. Do you think I'll do that? Come on then, this way. Right. Sergeant Ian has ordered a strip search, concerned the woman may be concealing something. 
the officer's already alerted me to the fact that she keeps going for her underwear. The first thing she's asked to do when she's come into custody is she's wanting the toilet. So again, it might be because she's concealed something, she wants to move something or she might want to neck something. Keep your hands out there for me. Detention officers Jill and Donna are looking for anything that may cause harm or inform the investigation. Keep your hands out. I'm up, up, up. That's fine, that's fine. Just slide your shoes off. Don't stand up for us. Do as you're told. Yeah? She's threatening to kick off. Lulu, can you go and assist him in number two? No, we're not doing that. Don't you dare bite me. Right, hack it in now. There we go, crack pipe in the knickers, there you go. That's why she had her hands down her pants. The strip search that she had was warranted, found a crack pipe and a lighter down her pants. You know, all the were around quite firmly because she started struggling. And then um, she made a lunge to bite the officer. Yeah, and then sort of kicked out at me. Missed me, but kicked out at me. I'll be 59 in February. I'm not getting any younger. I've been referred to by one detainee as that old lady, and that really hurts. <laughs> so you've been arrested for GBH, OK? I don't see myself as being as old as I am. You know, it's not until you look in the mirror that you realise how old you are. You hit the victim to the front of the head with a wooden bat causing injuries. Even now, at nearly 60, if officers was trying to restrain somebody, I'd be in there like a flash. Absolutely in there like a flash. I think I'd be the first in. So, based on what the officers have told me, and I've explained the reasons as to why you're here, I'm going to authorise your detention here at the police station, OK? This is the woman's eighth visit to custody in the past four months, what the staff call a revolving door detainee. Certain individuals coming into custody is just part and parcel of their life. Room at the inn. If you come to this side place, it's a bit like going shopping, you know, or going to the pharmacy or going to the GP or the doctors, whatever. They accept it, they come in, they're absolutely fine, they'll get on, they'll go through all the questions with you. They understand, they know the process, they know the booking in procedure, they know they're going to a cell, they know they're going to get fed and watered, etc. We have, we can have all day breakfast, cottage pie. Yeah, all day breakfast. They know you and you can generally, you know, calm people down because they, they see a familiar face. We do look after you, don't we? Yeah, you do. What would you rate us on TripAdvisor? Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten, that'll do for me. Thank you. Take care, see you later. <laughs> Good rating, nine out of ten, I can live with that. So yeah, another happy customer. It's nice when they go out smiling and thanking you. As the sun rises over another day in Grimsby. Here comes Jill's calf again. She wants food. <laughs> Jill checks in on the woman who was arrested for GBH. When she came in, she was ag aggressive on the strip search. She lashed out um, with the feet. She tried to bite the female officer. Um, and it's about calming the situation down. That's chilly beef. Oh, no, it's good. You usually find that um, when you're getting somebody who's under the influence, after they've either sobered up, uh, they'll want to talk. I'm going to sit with you. <laughs> I could do with the rest, actually. But you know, that's when they're getting emotional, don't realise what they've done. And then I get apologies. Oh, well, He's totally right. Not. Yeah, don't worry about it. You know, I'll say to them, yeah. Life goes on. We're only human at the end of the day. What do you think to the sausage and mash? Shit, but it's uh, beautiful. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll have a word with the customs sergeant and tell him that you're not happy it wasn't a Lincoln sausage. Yeah? She appreciated just somebody to talk to, somebody to be able to listen, and that's what we're there for. That's what we're there for. Our role as a detention officer is to look after 
the people that come into custody to make sure they leave better here in the morning than when they came in. Oh, you're more than welcome, sweetheart. You're welcome, thank you. Well, Lennox and Colborne's rivalry over Charlotte comes to a head tomorrow night here on ITV when the dramas continue in Jane Austen Sanderton at 9 o'clock. But on the way next tonight, it's all the latest ITV news at 10.